What's up guys, my name is Matt and uh, today I'm going to walk you guys through how to create a landscape in Blender using this really cool um, plugin um, named after an, an insect. I don't really know where it came from. We're going to open Blender and uh, get rid of the default stuff like so and first thing we're going to have to go to user preferences here and under add-ons just do a quick search for ANT and you can see I've already activated this is called add mesh ant landscape save your user settings and to begin hold shift a and add a new landscape now that's your new plugin right there and it brings up this by default and here's your parameters it actually pops up over here in the corner um, so this is uh, gives you a pretty good number of selections. Um, the biggest thing right here, if you're anything like 100% of all of my clients, they don't really know what they want until they see it and it's already done. If you're like that when it comes to trying to come up with a landscape um, for your next feature film or doing an animation or something or anything at all, and you need some kind of a landscape, this is a great place to start because it can give you a lot of um, just examples about different types of landscapes and that kind of thing. So anyway, um, this very first one is the, the default is multi-fractal, um, which is it's a pretty standard looking mountain. Um, we're gonna actually jack up the resolution, which is by default set, or subdivisions, excuse me set to 64 we'll jack it up to something like 500 so we can see what's going on this is generally what we're looking at it's a better look um, so we're just going to go ahead and go through each one of these types just so you guys have an idea the next one is rigid m fractal and as, a, as you can see it's very rigid next is the hybrid fractal i'm not really sure how you would use this it kind of looks like a butt to me but um yeah Next is the hetero terrain, um, which looks really jagged. Um, not really sure how you would use this in a landscape. Next preset is FBM. I'm not really sure what that stands for other than Facebook man. The next type just adds a turbulent, um, a turbulence um, effect here, which actually looks pretty cool. Following this is a distorted noise. Um, maybe you could use this. Marble actually looks something uh, more like on earth maybe in a desert a canyon or something like that shattered is the next one and definitely one of my favorites it's just kind of it has a really nice character to it and finally we have the strata terrain which looks like a normal mountain but when you flip it over to the other side it has like a stair step kind of effect which could be cool for like a kind of arena i don't know star wars comes to mind so the pod races and that kind of stuff so offset is raising the terrain from sea level. I'm literally, guys, you can just like hover over these and it'll give you a nice drop down explaining what each of these parameters controls. You can also invert and offset that kind of stuff like right there. And then up towards the top, the uh, mesh size actually measures it in blender units so you can actually change this from two to something like closer to six and it will increase your your mesh size by one two three four five six blender units across on each side so the next step um, when you're picking a terrain is get something that you really like and you really could see your scene playing out in an environment that is roughly represented by what you see before you all right, also keep in mind every time you change um, from a different type of terrain, it's going to reset your camera to the default view for whatever reason. So before you get started, go ahead and pick a type of terrain that you want to stick with. And then once you get that, then you can move, move your camera around and get a decent framing. All right, so I'm just going to kind of pick a general frame, something, I don't know something kind of like that I kind of like to frame it with a peak on a on a third something like that cool all right so our next step is on your number pad hit number seven to go to top view 
and then five to go to orthographic view so that there's not any perspective involved and then you'll hit tab to enter edit mode and look at those vertices it's not a yellow solid those are just that many vertices as you can see at the very top I've got 250,000 verts so um, the only trouble with this plugin is you can the more detailed you get your landscape the the poly count really jumps up alright so what we're gonna do with everything selected in edit mode hit the U hit the letter U key on your keyboard and drop down to project from view click that and what that's going to do is if we go over to the UV editing layout you can see that this is now projected as from the top view as exactly we saw it you know from the very top orthographic right here onto your UV mapping layout so what we're gonna do is going to open a new image and just lay that right on top so we're just gonna do a low resolution texture just like so just like a rock texture is fine and then hit S to scale this up and kind of fit it generally within the image right here alright head back to default view hit 0 and then we'll go into our world settings make sure that we are using nodes just a white is fine turn on ambient occlusion and just do a quick rough test render just to see how everything's doing and it's Christmas alright so the reason we cannot see the uh, texture that we just UV mapped we have it we have to actually because we're in cycles we have to connect it to the material node for your mountains and head back to the node editor and hit oh you know what also our landscape our mountains don't even have a material applied to them that's why they were totally white so now that they have this material we can add our texture image texture right here and open up what we have already got here and connect that and now we should come up with a little bit better result beautiful it's so pretty alright so a really good tip when you're texturing your mountain scene it is great to use a very high resolution image for when you're doing this kind of stuff so what we're going to do is actually replace this image and uh, what I did I just I googled uh, mountain texture and just did an image search and I think I just hit like the third one like that and uh, it's a pretty decent size image I think the pixel count was yeah like 5,000 something whatever pretty big enough it's like 5k ish um, so what we need to do is go back into our UV editor oh my gosh it's up here UV editing layout and so we're gonna select our mountains again tab into edit mode and then that's our layout so what we're gonna do is open up a mountain rock image that's a lot bigger as you can see we gotta zoom way out and it's still lined up pretty well we just needed to add that new image in there go into the node editor and make sure that that same image is also in the node editor so that way it knows which image it's going to lay out in the way that it is in the node in the UV mapping so the mapping tells the node how to map that image onto the object alright so we'll go back to the default view and render that out and see what we come up with alright looking a lot better even though you are getting some stretching here that's also due to the the way that I've mapped it and there are different ways to go about UV mapping that's a whole other series of tutorials but for the most part I think this is gonna work for what we're trying to do um, the next 
part is going to be the sky. So what we're going to do is still in the node editor, we're going to hit the world settings and our material. And we will drop in a texture coordinate and also do a mapping node right here. So let's do texture just so we can line this up just for the still. Um, drag the camera into the vector node right here and then do an environment texture right here on the out and then plug this into here. Okay, awesome. Now, um, to get a decent sky texture, uh, there's a really great resource that I discovered called cgskies.com. Uh, these guys have a ton of different skies that you could use for any kind of 3D scene that you're designing that is taking place outside and you can just click anything and it shows you an example render of what it looks like with that sky and then you get a 3d preview of that sky and a dynamic range preview showing you how many stops they've got on that exposure and they even give you free samples that even you know 3000 by 1500 pixels is there what they consider as a low resolution or you can get an hdr uh, sample as well that's where i've just i've pulled this one um, so great resource for, for doing a lot of CG work and rendering out realistic uh, HDR lighting. So we're going to open up, let's see, CG there. I just got a free download from them. And we'll go back to 3D view and see what that looks like. So we've got our sky in place, but I would love to have the sun rising like right in between this valley right here. That would just seem like it would be really cool. So the way we're going to do that is go over to the compositing right here and go into our material settings and under world settings. So we're back at the world right here. So the reason I did this is for the camera. Um, we were we we're going to be basically spinning that image around so that we can see it from the camera's perspective. So it, it works really well in the preview bar right here. So we're going to rotate this on the X and it gives you, um, it updates in the preview right there is going to be the bottom of our image because it's only like a half circle or a half sphere. It doesn't render the the ground or anything it's only the sky um, and then we'll just rotate on the z-axis to bring the Sun around there we go and what you have to do is to take essentially this image and imagine your mountains on top of this image so we would probably tilt this up I'm trying to figure out which way is up yeah too much so something something along like 80 degrees give or take maybe 85 something like that just gonna be pretty close so we can hit F12 to render that and just to see kind of generally where we are alright we're in the neighborhood I think we've gotta just rotate I think the Sun is behind this peak right here so we just gotta rotate on the Z right here Oh, other way something like that yeah let me render that out so there you can yeah perfect you can get your your Sun and place it exactly on the sky as you like it now the the only thing with with when it comes to realism and you're getting a decent render and kind of creating the illusion that this is a real mountain range um, one of the things that I like to do is go back over to default view and select our like, tab out of edit mode and select our camera and add a little bit of depth of field to it. So we're going to display our limits and come out of here. So we've got the little cross here and we'll just jack the distance up to, I don't even know which peak we're looking at in the camera, this one. So it's a little bit closer. I think it's this guy right here. So we'll the distance back to like right there so it's on that it's even with that peak and then for the size um, let's just say something like point zero 
zero five. Not a whole lot. You don't want a, a, just a shallow, shallow, shallow depth of field. At least for landscapes, anyway. Um, number of blades six. That's fine. So that will add a little bit of um, realism. Actually, we can hit five on the numpad to go back to perspective view. And that will help us out a little bit. Also, another trick um, to add a little bit of realism is dialing back your ambient occlusion to like half will help because you've got, because if you think about it in real life, if the sun is rising over here and coming up over the mountains, you're going to have a lot of long shadows casting over where the camera is looking. So these mountains in the, in the foreground, they're going to be kind of dark. So if we cut your ambient occlusion, the factor, oops, I actually put five. How about that? So 0.5 instead of one, uh, that should help the, the mountains appear just a little bit darker and the scene to be a little more realistic. And if we hit F12, render that out, that's what we're talking about. Something along those lines. So the only, yeah, and that that's the only other thing. I would say maybe add a little just a touch more of uh, depth of field to kind of blur out how perfect those peaks are because in real life I don't think that would be that digital looking and of course you can also change that with the resolution on your on your landscape plugin and you know again play with different um, styles and and um, subdivisions and that kind of stuff but uh, anyway for the most part that is pretty much landscape basics in Blender using the ANT landscape plugin. I appreciate you guys hanging in there. I know this was a long one, but I will uh, catch you guys on the flip-flop. Later.